There he is, Dustin yeah. Benoit. How, Dustin, how's it going, man? Good. What's up, Ken? How you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, how's retirement treating you? Awesome. Awesome. Coaching my kids sports and driving them from basketball practice to baseball to everything. So it's uh, it's good. All right, let's start right there. Coaching the kids. I want to know right now, what kind of coach are you? Are you one of these guys yelling all the time or are you kind of mellow? No, I mean, I just try to teach them the game. Um, they're young. I mean, my my nine-year-old and, and seven-year-old, um, you know, just teach them the game, you know, teach them how hard it is. You know, you're not going to get a hit every time, which, you know, a lot of the times they do, but um, just yeah. teach them the, the right fundamentals and, and how to act and, and how to deal with the game of failure because that's what baseball is. All right, so Dustin, you were a teammate of David Ortiz's from 2006 to 16. Yeah. Obviously, a lot went on in those years. But I'm wondering, was there a point where you thought, okay, I think he's a Hall of Famer? Um, yeah, you know, he just did – the, the crazy thing about David was, I mean, he was always the foundation of our team. You know, he's he's hitting in the middle of the order. You, you can book what he's going to do every year. Um, you know, with the amount of home runs, the RBIs, um, you know, the, the leadership that he brings, um, and, and not only, you know, you know, when you're playing with somebody like that, you don't, you don't necessarily think, oh my gosh, he's a hall of famer. You think you, you just watch him and try to get better. Um, and that, and that's what my mindset was is, is, um, you know, watch this guy. He's, he's won before, you know, how can I better myself to help the team win, to, to win a world series. And that's what David's focus was. You know, when you have a, a quality of player like him and his, he's a team first mentality, you know, that's when you're special. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I knew he would, you know, he's a Hall of Fame player, but most importantly, his goal was to win. And, um, you know, that's why we hit it off so well, you know, from the start. Dustin, what stood out to you most about him when he was in the box? You know, it's it. it I, I've said this one other time, but his ability to slow the game down in big situations is like nobody else. Um, you know, I, I, you know, obviously you watch tons of film on every hitter and, and everything. And, and Barry Bonds, in my opinion, was the greatest hitter ever, but in a pressure situation, I want David Ortiz up. He's came through every single time when you need a home run, he, David Ortiz hits it. You know, I saw him do it in 2013 and, and everything. And Barry didn't do that in his first part of, of his career in the playoffs. Um, but from, from playoff game one till the end, in a big moment, the game was in slow motion for David Ortiz. And and that's the one thing that I'll always remember is, is the the bigger the situation, you know, he doesn't get amped up. He controls the strike zone. He knows what he wants to do and he attacks and, and executes. And for somebody to do that at that level, I mean, is, you know, it's he's the best at it. And Dustin, let's talk about what kind of teammate he was. And I know this doesn't always factor into – a Hall of Fame voters mindset, but I recall you when you came up, I think it was August 2006, mm -hmm. you start off, you were like four for 40. And I wonder at that time, was Ortiz supportive? Was he riding you? Was he ignoring you? What was he like? <laughs> um, he, he was fine. You know, he just, you know, at, at that, that first, the first part in 06, we had, I got called up. I got thrown into a tough spot. We just got swept by the Yankees five games. Um, they threw me into the lineup in Anaheim and it was more of, Hey, play defense. You know what I mean? We need you to play defense. Alex Gonzalez just got hurt. Mark Loretta was hurt. Um, so it, it wasn't, they didn't count on me to be hit at the top of the lineup and, and, you know, be a run producer. Um, and then obviously the next year, my, my rookie year in 2007, I started out hitting ninth and it was the same thing. Play defense, you know, don't, you know, turn the lineup over, get on base. And then once I got from at bats underneath me, you know, it was a different thing. And then it started to click where I hit at the top of the lineup. I was sitting in front of David and and I was just honestly, I was trying to get on base for for David and Manny. Um, and that's it makes my job easy. I don't have to try to do too much. I just got to get on base and do my job because I know these guys behind me are going to drive me in. It's funny, Dustin, my picture of David in the clubhouse when I wasn't in there, when you guys were alone is of a guy walking around, dropping F-bombs, life of the party. Yeah. Is that an accurate portrayal? Uh, sometimes, you know, he, he's, you know, he had a, he has a soft side too. Um, you know, he's like a chameleon, you know, whatever situation he's in, you know, he, he if, if he's around me, he'll get louder because I'm louder. You know, if he's around, you know, Xander Bogarts, who's more of a quiet type, you know, he'll be quieter or, you know, if he's around Alex Cora or Mike Lowell, you know, he's, he's just, 
the way he navigates himself to other players is, uh, you know, it's one of a kind. And, and, you know, it was, it was special getting a chance to play with him uh, for as long as I did. And, and uh, I learned so much from him. Now you mentioned Manny and Manny Ramirez, obviously you were a longtime teammate of his as well. He has not gotten the support that David has. And Dustin, we know the reason it's the PED situation, the failed tests as a former player and as a former teammate, how do you see him? Do you see him as a Hall of Famer or do you see him as a guy, hey, he was great, but? Um, yeah, probably. I mean, the second part. I mean, I, you know, I, he, he was obviously right-handed hitter. I mean, he's one of a kind, you know, um, you know, but, uh, you know, obviously you're, you're, there's rules, you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, that's where I'm kind of at, you know, because I, I look at my own situation, you know, I played at five, eight, 165 pounds, you know, and, and having a great career and one slide de deters my career. And instead of, you know, trying to take something that could maybe be help me out health wise so I could play a longer career. I didn't chose not to do that. Like I, you, you know what I mean? Like I, I value the game and, and, and try to play the game the right way and set the example for, for my kids. Um, but everybody's different. Everybody has their own way about them. Everybody, you know, has their own choices to make. And, and, I'm not one to, to judge him or anything like that. You know, you can do, I just can speak for me. Uh, but playing with Manny, you know, it felt good when he's hitting. I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, you get a little nervous when they hit a fly ball to left. But <laughs> other than that, you know, uh, you know, that's, you know, that, that's my thoughts on it. Shilly, another former teammate of yours, another guy on the ballot today, controversial for an entirely different set of reasons. Dustin, in your mind, even with all the offensive things he has said, even with him saying he did not want to be part of this process, should he be elected today? Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I obviously I might be biased. I play with Shill, you know, and and Shill was great to me my my rookie year. Um, you know, he he's, I mean, shoot, I saw him pitch in the World Series, and he had when I mean nothing, he was throwing meatballs in there, and I think he threw eight innings of two hit ball and beat the Rockies, and I'm like. If this guy can pitch like this in this situation, and then you look at the body of work before that, it's special, man. Like the just the big game, any big game, you know, he's a guy that he has the ball. You know, you have you have a great chance of winning. Um, and yeah, I get it. You know, he's outspoken. He, you know, he says he says what's on his mind. And and I'm not like I said earlier. I'm not one to judge him. He's, you know, everybody should be them. Um, you know, but. I don't think as, as a teammate of his, you know, I don't think it should it should affect if he's a Hall of Famer or not because of what he says. You know what I mean? I mean, you've seen me and Terry Francona talk to each other before. If anybody hears that, you know, we should be <laughs> we should be arrested for some of that stuff. But, um, you know, everybody's different. So, you know, um, but as a base, as a pitcher, I want him on the mound and I want to play behind him. I'll tell you that. So I don't know if that means you're a Hall of Famer or not. You know, Dustin, it's funny about Schilling. I covered him at the start of his career in mm -hmm. Baltimore in 1988 before he was traded for, of course, the Glenn Davis trade and then came to Boston, all, all these things. So back then and even later in his career as it progressed, he was someone who was very conscious of baseball history, very mindful of it, someone who I would have thought then would be extremely proud to be in the Hall of Fame. This guy knew his stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that how you saw him? Yeah. I, I mean, it, it, exactly. He's very intelligent. You know, um, he loves baseball. Um, he might tell you sometimes he, he doesn't, which, you know, it's like, leave me out of this process. But like deep down, like it, the way I view him is, is he is he's a baseball lifer. Like if he call, he calls me or he text, we text probably once a month, like I'll send him some autograph stuff for his charity stuff and things like that. But you can tell his mind's always running about baseball. Like he has opinions about everything. And, and, you know, he, I was fortunate enough that I had guys like him around as a rookie that I got to learn from um, because it, it helped, it helped me in so many ways as I, you know, navigated through my career um, in that environment. And um, yeah, he's a, for sure. He's a, he's a baseball nerd. All right. Let's wrap it up with a couple more questions about Ortiz. You were a very fine defensive player. And obviously there are players who can do that. And there are players who are just DHs. Yeah. And we saw Edgar Martinez going to the Hall of Fame a few years ago, primarily as a DH. David was even more of a DH. For you, 
Should that matter in this process? Should DHs be held maybe to a higher standard? Uh, well, the funny thing about David is, is if you look, I, I know he didn't play first base a lot, but he's actually pretty good at first base. Like when we played in the in the World Series, he could play first. So that that's why, as me personally, I'm like everybody just thinks he can just DH and whatever, but he can actually play first. I understand your question, but what David did offensively and what he did for the oppo the opposing teams to literally game plan for one guy. Hey, there's which guy are we not going to let beat us? David Ortiz. And he still beat you. That's a Hall of Fame player. And that's the way I look at it. You, you know, if 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 David's out of the lineup, I get pitched differently. If David's in the lineup, I get pitched differently. So those are the guys that when you're going to, to play against, you know who they are. And if they still can beat you, that's my opinion of a Hall of Fame baseball player. Now, last question. Now, I've right. got stories about David just from working with him at Fox for a few years. <laughs> you played with him for 11 years. Yeah. Can you give us one story that stands out to you that kind of, in your mind, maybe defines him? And if it's a little maybe off color, you can go there. Uh, I mean, I think the best one is, is I've already said it at his roast. They made me do a roast about him. Um, and this is shoot. I had played with him for probably, I don't know, seven or eight years already. And, uh, we're on deck and, uh, in between innings and a catcher goes to block a ball and it squirts over by me. And, uh, the umpire wasn't there to give him a ball right away. So the catcher looked at me and he goes, Hey, what's up, Dustin? And, uh, I was like, Hey, what's up? And David walked over. He, he I think he was, he was having a bad day. And he goes, you know, what the F did he call you? And I was like, he called me Dustin. He goes, why did he call you that? I'm like, that's my name, man. Like, he goes, oh, yeah, is that right? I thought it was Pee Wee. So we're going back and forth. So he thought my name was Pee Wee for the first seven years. And the funny part about it is I've been hitting in front of him for the last seven years. And they actually announced my full name right in front of him. So either he's locked in or he can't hear or something's going on. But that's probably the funniest. But um, like. But honestly, like with David, like we, we we played together for so long and in and, and games that meant so much, like it's it's sometimes I felt like we could sit together and we're thinking the same thing. And, and, and you know, our, our minds were were similar on to how to attack and beat another team. Um, and that was fun. It was special to to, to play with him. Um, it was even more fun playing in the World Series with him because I got to play first and second. Um, <laughs> so. You know, that was a good time, but you know, he's just, he's special to me. And, and obviously I hope today's the day for him. Dustin, thank you so much. Always good talking to you. We miss you, man. And you. Uh, I miss you guys too. Hope everything's good in retirement. Thanks. All so right. Much. Have a good one.